One property of waves we can cover is reflection. So that's when things sort of bounce off things. So let's look first at a wave on a string and see what's going to happen. So first of all, if we have a fixed end, this is important. So let's just say we have a string here, and what we do is we create a wave in it. So maybe we go like, whoa, there's a the little wave here. So this is a wave traveling along a string. So the wave then will be traveling sort of this way initially. So let's just say it travels that way, and it hits a fixed end. So maybe it's a wall or something like that. This is sort of before. What happens is when it bounces off, so after it's sort of bounced off, it's going to come back, except it will be reflected or flipped. So as it sort of comes back, it's going to be something like this. So this time it's going to be going back that way. Something like this right here. So this one right here, it basically, it gets reflected or flipped. That's the key thing here. Okay, that at a fixed end, it basically, it flips. In other words, it reflects, it changes direction. That's, I think, one of the important things here. And maybe I can show you a little bit better with this PHET animation. So here what I'm going to do is just take this thing and choose manual and no damping. And I'll do a fixed end because I can do a loose end or no end. But I'm going to make it a fixed end here. So what I'm going to do then is watch carefully then. I'm going to make an oscillation. And watch carefully what happens. As it hits the fixed end, it basically goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down. In other words, every time it bounces back, every time it reflects, it flips upside down. Now, in theory, this is what would happen. Of course, in real life, you have damping. So real life strings do this. So that's damping is a way to, it loses energy, see? So if you have lots and lots of damping, you basically can't really send it across. That's something we'll do some more videos about. Basically, this is the idea, is that we're going to just take it, make a wave in it, and we'll see that every time it hits the end, a fixed end, it reflects and flips upside down. That's the key thing to look at here. Now, what if we have a wave on a string, but this time has an open end? So this time, what if I draw, so I'm going to draw myself some sort of string like this. Maybe this time it's free to sort of go along some sort of ring here. So maybe we have like a some sort of ring here that allows this string to basically slide up and down this pole. So as it comes in this way, this is the before, well, what's going to happen is afterwards it's going to come back, but it's going to come back in the same orientation, so it doesn't flip. So basically it's going to go back this way. Of course, I still have to draw my little ring here. So this is sort of what happened here. This thing right here, it does not reflect. It just comes back, you know, the same orientation. So it does not flip. That's the key thing for reflection of a string uh, or a wave on a string if it's got an open end. So what I can do is show that as well. So I'll do loose end. That's sort of an open end like this. So something like this, a loose end. And what we can do then is do this. So where we go, and you'll see it sort of goes like this. Now what's happening, of course, is that it hits this fixed end and reflects. Every time it hits this end over here, it reflects. But watch what happens. It just goes, whoa, and back the way it was, and it flips. And it goes, whoa, and back again. So that's actually what waves will do. But I think more important, and what um, is used more often, is reflection off a plane surface. So let's say this time we have some sort of solid surface here. So I'm trying to draw, whoops, I was trying to draw a straight line, but I did a really bad job. Maybe I can use this little feature here. Oh yeah, much better. There we go. So this right here could be our surface here. Now the solid surface could be anything we want. In this case, I'm going to make it, let's say we make it light, it's going to bounce off. So I'm going to make this glass, but it could be anything else. Now what we have to do first of all is we have to draw what's called a normal. So we're going to draw a dotted line that's perpendicular, in other words, 90 degrees to the surface. That's really important. That's the normal, it's called, which is perpendicular to the surface. Remember, that's the mathematical symbol that we can use for perpendicular, this little thing. It means 90 degrees to the surface. So what's going to happen then is if I draw my light or whatever it is coming in, if it's a, we're going to draw a rays. So let's say I draw this thing coming in at some sort of angle here like this, a straight line. This is a ray coming in. Well, whatever angle it was, 
initially. So whatever this angle here was, we're going to call it theta, which is an angle. We're going to give a little subscript i for incident. Okay, so I'm going to say theta i equals the incident angle. And the really important thing, by the way, angles are from the normal. This is so important. So many people make a tiny little mistake and yet it ends up being a big mistake here is that all angles in reflection and later on we're going to learn refraction all angles are measured from the normal in other words the angle is not from the surface if you're given an angle from the surface you have to then figure out what this is now remember this whole angle here is 90 degrees so let's say you're told this is I don't know 20 degrees then you know this will be 70 because 70 plus 20 is 90 so whatever you're given here, in case they're being really sneaky in a question or something like that, uh, giving you an angle from a solid surface, make sure you figure out what the angle is from the normal, because this is how they're defined. Now reflection is really, really easy, because whatever angle came in here, it's going to be the same angle going out. So whatever theta i was, we're going to have theta r. So theta r in this case is going to be the reflected angle. And in reflection, we have this, that theta i equals theta r. That is this sort of key equation here. That is what you need for reflection. So it's like a ball bouncing off a surface. If you throw a ball, you know, this way, it's going to bounce that way. Well, if you shine, let's say, a laser beam on a mirror, for example, it's going to bounce off and do this. So reflection is pretty easy. Most students don't really have much trouble with it. In fact, I think it's pretty straightforward. But what we can do, however, is draw the same situation, but we can draw it looking a little bit different. So what I'm going to do now is draw myself a straight line. So we're going to still do the same sort of thing. We're still going to have a ray coming in. Uh, oops, sorry, but instead of a ray, sorry, we're not going to have a we're not going to have a ray coming in. I'm still going to draw a normal here. This is still a solid surface, but instead of drawing a ray, remember that's just the direction of the wave going this way and then that way. We learned before that we can draw things as wave fronts. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to draw my ray coming in. So I'm still going to draw it this way and my ray going out. And that angle is still theta i and this is still theta r. That hasn't changed. But what some people like to do is draw this, what we call rays, uh, sorry, wave fronts. So in this case right here, we can draw wave fronts as these sort of lines going like this. So here, now this is maybe a little bit messy, but these are the wave fronts coming in, and they're going to be the same as the wave fronts going out. The wave fronts are at 90 degrees to the direction of the ray. So these right here are called wave fronts. So in case you ever need to use this way, still reflection happens, so the wave fronts come in this way, and then they're going to sort of bounce and go that way. So still, same idea. The rays are still helpful, I think. So those will be the rays. These green ones are here, those will be the rays. And still, theta incident equals theta reflected. So the angle that it comes in at is still the angle it goes out at. It's just a way to draw the wave fronts because maybe you're trying to draw water doing this and water will go sort of in and then bounce that way. So this is reflection.